Have you ever wondered what happens inside a modern Grand Prix team? ING is making Formula One easier by giving you a pass behind the scenes to find out. I suppose I'd have to go back to a very early age to determine exactly how I got interested in Formula One and, and how I ended up on this particular path. Jerry specialises in cutting-edge aerospace materials. I'd have to thank one of my uncles who is uh, something of a motorsport fanatic. His designs, produced in high-tech composites like Kevlar and carbon, help make an F1 car quicker, lighter, stronger and safer. I don't think I'm necessarily you kind of what you'd call your typical engineer or scientist when I was younger. Catherine works in research and development. As I kind of moved up through school, the science side of things was just, for me, a, a heck of a lot more interesting. Here in the lab, she puts F1 under the microscope. Critical compounds are examined, tested and analysed down to the molecular level. At sixth form, I was the only girl in my maths course and there were two of us in physics. I, I don't know why, but typically most of the girls seem to go into your kind of English, languages, arts type of degrees. I come from an engineering background. My father was a civil engineer. I think that I saw an opportunity to marry the two interests, if you like, and that led me to pursue a, a mechanical engineering degree. Motorsport really didn't come into the equation originally. I chose to do a kind of science-based degree, then went on to do a, a PhD. As with all kind of PhD research projects, it's always kind of novel technology that you're kind of pushing onwards. Mine was also very applied. I worked with um, carbon fiber, and in that area, you have two main industries, you have aerospace or F1. I think probably in, in contrast to most of the people I, I went through university with, I did have a very clear idea as to where I was trying to get. I became very interested in motorsports and naturally in Formula One being the pinnacle, that, that was the one that attracted my attention most. For me, I'm a bit more of an applied scientist. I like to see what I'm, I'm working with almost immediately and motorsport, there's, there's a very big turnabout in terms of the workload. Certainly my arrival here is not accidental and I think that would be true for, for almost every designer you would meet. There, there are, in my experience, there are no accidental Formula One designers. A lot of them have pursued it quite rigorously. The teams are currently constantly pushing the boundaries. You will undertake some research a couple of months before maybe you start racing, and that can be on the track at the beginning of the season. You wouldn't see that in any other industry. My experiences at motorsport events as a child, I think I was overwhelmed by the, the noise and the excitement, the, the apparent bravery of it, of it all. Now, when I'm fortunate enough to go to a test or race, those initial feelings are the ones that first strike me. It's the feeling as, as you're walking into somewhere and you can hear the cars. It's the tingle down the spine of, of the, just the, the sheer noise of them. I think these are, are traits which I probably identified as a, as a young child but didn't appreciate until I got older.